Hey, good day, it's Brazo back in the shop today. Thanks for joining me. This is episode six of building the Titan 60 model aircraft engine. Now, if this is your first time here, there's a playlist up above there now that you can click on and that will show you all the previous episodes. In the last episode, we made the bulkhead mount and the back crankcase cover and fitted that. And in today's episode, we're gonna work on the cylinder liner and also the cylinder head. Now, a lot of people have been concerned about where this exhaust port appeared to be as if the head bolted straight down on top of the engine there, but in fact, it doesn't. The liner will fit inside this bore in the crankcase, slides down quite a long way, but even so, roughly half the length of that liner will be above the surface here, and then the head itself bolts down on top of that. So by the time we finish, we'll pretty much double the height of the engine. Now the material that's supplied for the liner is a piece of heavy walled steel tube. It's pretty close to the correct overall length. We'll need to bore this out to the finished bore size or close to it. And then we'll need to uh, cut it to length, a bit of machining on the outside there and leaving a shoulder at one end. Now later on there will be a set of cooling fins that will be shrunk onto this liner and we'll have some bolt holes in here to line up with the cylinder head and also the crankcase. Now the cylinder head is supplied as a casting. Now this has to finish at 1.875 inches. Now somebody got to this with a hacksaw and cut the gate off and was probably a bit um, overzealous <laughs> in that process and unfortunately this is going to be undersized. So measuring that now we've got uh, 1.85 inches. So we're a bit short on the diameter. So unfortunately this piece of material is now scrapped. However, I've got some 6011T6 and this is uh, probably a superior material to cut the cylinder head from. And the bonus is that this stuff anodizes really well, whereas this doesn't because of the zinc content in it. So later on, we're gonna be able to anodize the head and I'm thinking, I don't know, gold, red, something like that. <laughs> and that's gonna make the engine look really classy. So I think we're gonna head over to the lathe first. We'll do the liner and I've got some mandrels and jigs set up for holding all of these parts and I've done all of that off camera so I can concentrate on actually making the parts rather than jigs and the fixtures. So uh, yeah, let's go. In the uh, build notes, it actually says to face this uh, piece of stock and then bore it out close to the finished size and then finish by reaming. Now the finished size on the bore is meant to be 0.937 of an inch, which is a bit of an odd size and I don't have a reamer anywhere close to that. I do have some adjustable reamers, so I'm thinking that what I'll do is to machine this very close to its uh, finished size, then run that adjustable reamer through, but I'm going to leave a small amount of stock to take off later on by lapping. Uh, I believe that these little two-stroke engines uh, benefit from having slightly clearance fit at the bottom of the liner and then almost a zero clearance fit at the top where the piston will go to top dead center. And the way to achieve that is by lapping and then putting bias on the lapping toward the bottom of the liner. Now I've also machined up a little sort of a go, no go gauge. This end here is about five thou undersize and then it finishes here at about one thou undersize. And if I can get that to finish and slide it into the liner, then I can do the rest by lapping or or honing or whatever but uh, I just want to get very very close to my finished size So I'm going to go with my biggest uh, insert boring bar here just to reduce the chatter and uh, we're just going to, I don't know, <laughs> we'll work at it, see how we go. Uh, clearly this is not round. I just want to work out where we're at as starting point. So I got about 63 thou to go. I'm actually working in thou today.
Right, should be able to take the last bit off in one pass. So I did uh, 17 thou with the last one. This one I'll take at 16. We should be about a thou or two undersize. That's five thou under on this end of the gauge here, and it's got a bit of a wiggle in it, so we must be pretty close. Ah. I don't know, <laughs> that seemed a bit tighter than it should be, but I'm only measuring with calipers, should really do this with a mic. Where I recut that, I effectively did a spring pass, and that has now got a lot more wiggle, and it doesn't quite go on to the next step. So we'll do a spring pass, and we should be pretty close. Tiny bit of chatter there. Well, there you go. So that slid in all the way to the very end of my gauge here, which means that we should now be able to put this on the mandrel that we're going to use to machine the outside of the, the liner. Let's see how that goes. So this is the mandrel that I machined previously. It's okay. A little bit of wobble in it, but I think we'll be good. Yeah. Right, we'll flip this around, clean up the sand, then we'll measure it and get it to length. This got to finish at two inches and we're quite a way over that yet so we'll whittle this back to its correct length and then we'll mount it on the mandrel. about 27, 28 thou to go. We've actually got a, about a 10 thou tolerance on this length. Uh, the finish inside there is not brilliant, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to do some post-processing uh, on this anyway to get that bore accurate to size and also improve the finish. And it's actually easier to machine the piston to suit the bore rather than the other way around. So if this works out a little bit oversized, not the end of the world. This mandrel here is machined to be one thou undersized and it's relieved in the center. Now I machined this out of some cold bending steel. Now this is stuff we used to supply to students in the school to do machining projects and it's awful. <laughs> uh, it's no wonder the kids could never get a decent finish on this stuff. 
I used to beg the, uh, the uh, head of department to buy some good quality free machining steel and uh, when they saw the price compared to this stuff they just said no nope, can't afford it uh, we'll use this but in this case it doesn't matter what the surface finish is like uh, since we're only going to use it once so I'm going to hold this on with a, an M6 cap head screw now we need three different diameters on this we'll clean this up and the biggest diameter will be the register that fits against the top of the cooling fins the next size will be the shrink fit size for the cooling fins on the liner and the smallest diameter which will be at this end will fit inside the crankcase ball. So we'll clean this up first and I'm going to set all my measurements off this end face here and we'll set that on a DRO and then we can get our steps along that length. Now clearly that's not round, I just want to see where we're at though. That was our finish pass on this largest diameter up here and then we got the two steps now to put in the rest of the liner. So I'm going to turn the second largest diameter up to this end which will form the, the shoulder that will fit down against the, the cooling fins. This should be my finished pass, so I'm just going to measure it here. This part will be machined again later anyway. Ah, oh, look at that. Well that's the part where the cooling fin is going to be shrunk on, they're going to come down about another four or five thou and that will fit into the crankcase. Nice. Uh, that's where the cylinder head will sit later on, so we can have it up here. And this is the section that the cooling fins will be shrunk onto. And then, if you look through the exhaust port, there's no gap or there's no hole through into the cylinder liner, but that's where the ports will be cut later. And on the other side, there'll be another set of ports for the intake to take the fuel air mixture up to the cylinder head. But uh, yeah, it's turned out all right. Do need to break that edge down here, the sharp edge down here, we can do that later. And I went to all the trouble to polish that and then realised you're not going to see it anyway, it's all going to be inside the crankcase. But the, the bore of the liner still needs some work, um, but that can come later as well, but we're going to get on and do the cylinder head now. Okay, I think this is a good time to stop and explain what I'm going to do next. And uh, I did say that after finishing off the cylinder sleeve, we were going to have a go at doing the cylinder head and get all of the preliminary machining done on that. Not from this casting, of course, but from the other piece of stock that I had. But you can see that there's a 
a boss here that needs to fit inside the cylinder sleeve. This will actually become the combustion chamber at a later stage. And the fit between that boss and the inside of the sleeve needs to be fairly close. And when I had a look at the finish that I got after boring out the sleeve, I was really disappointed in myself. Um, I don't know if you can see, but the quality of the finish in there is, is pretty awful, to be honest. And I made it worse by trying to use an adjustable reamer. Now, I had this left over for another job. It's a cheap import reamer. And I set it to the right size and tried to run it through there. And I think I just made it worse. The blades on the reamer were grabbing and kinking and, and sort of cocking sideways. And I knew that if I ran that through under power, I'd probably ruin it. So I stopped and put that aside. And I decided that the best thing to do is to lap this now before we go ahead and make the cylinder head. Even if I do just a coarse lap on it, it will improve the surface finish. It'll bring it uh, parallel and accurately dimensioned, or at least uh, circular, truly circular. And then once that's done, I can go ahead and machine that boss to go inside the sleeve. So I needed to be able to make a lap. Now this is an expanding internal lap and I've never made one of these before and I had a look at a few resources on the internet and there were some commercially available ones and some that were shop made and I've sort of taken a few features from each of those and come up with my own design. So this is made of aluminium. It's already uh, like a fairly close fit inside the sleeve and it has to be able to expand. So there's a pair of M4 uh, grub screws in there that uh, bear down on the bottom of this slot. Now the slot goes right through to a clearance hole on this side here and that just leaves a tiny little bit of material on the other side there to act as a hinge. So once you tighten these grub screws it opens up the slot and the, the lap will expand inside the, the bore of the sleeve. But you need to be able to drive that somehow and uh, what I've made is a steel shank and it's a sort of a fairly loose fit inside the, the hole in the center of the, the lap. And the idea is there that you can allow the lap to float inside the bore of the sleeve, even though you're driving that or holding a stationary and rotating the sleeve. And in order to keep that from rotating, uh, I've got a sort of a cap here, and it's got a, a roll pin uh, through the uh, thickness of the, the cap and a single M4 grub screw and it will fit over the shank like that and the roll pin will fit down into that little uh, clearance hole there. Um, you have to assemble all this in the vise, but you get the idea. So that now can rotate uh, and still float inside the liner, which I think is fairly important. So uh, I'm gonna get all this assembled now, we'll get over the lathe, I'll protect the bed of the lathe and then we'll start that lapping process and just see how we go but I feel a lot happier if I have this at least partially lapped before we make the head. Okay, this is how this works. I've got the spindle of the lap in the chuck of the lathe. I've got the lathe bed covered, and as you can see there, the, the body of the lap is sort of free to move around a bit. I'm gonna run the lap at fairly low speed, and I'm gonna use this, uh, this same lapping compound that I used on the crankshaft. I think it's five micron. Worked okay on the crankshaft, so I figure it's all right on the sleeve. And we're just going to put a bit of that on the lap. And we we'll use some light oil as well. we'll start off with the lap fairly loose. a few little burrs on the inside of that sleeve from where I tried using the adjustable reamer and I could feel those catching but they seem to have gone now. So we're just going to expand this a bit at a time.
that's interesting. <laughs> Alright, seems you don't have to expand it very much for that to grab. Um, I've got a block of wood here with a split in it. I'm going to use this as sort of a handle. That'll get me a, a better grip on it. Now you probably see that that's rocking and rolling a bit as I'm working the sleeve up and down the lap there and that's just because the probably the lap body is not completely concentric with the shank. Now I'm not sure if that makes a difference or not. You know in theory you'd say well it probably puts some bias on one side of the sleeve or the other. But I feel like it's getting better like you don't notice it quite as much as the the process goes on. So I'm going to have a look at the inside of that bore there and just see if we got um, you know shiny patches appearing on that. All right, well, it's sort of getting there. Uh, that adjustable reamer really did a, a lot of damage inside there. I, I was stupid to use it. <laughs> I uh, regret totally now using that, but I think I can get this cleaned up. Now, it may end up that the sleeve is a little bit bigger than what's shown in the drawings, but we haven't made the piston, so we can make that to fit. So I'm just gonna keep at this now. You don't need to watch all of it. <laughs> we'll come back when I reckon I've got that ball clean. Now the good news is it seems to be working so I've just given that a bit of a clean and this end of the sleeve is looking quite polished and smooth now. Unfortunately the other end is badly scored. Now this is the one where I put that adjustable reamer in and realised it wasn't working and took it out but it's left some quite deep score marks there and they're going to be not impossible to get out but it's just going to take time and we're just going to have to keep working at it. So I've been doing this now for about 15 minutes and what I do is um, put fresh wrapping compound on, some more oil, put this on by hand, you gotta be really careful you don't know, sort of cock it sideways and get it caught and then when you can feel it that's rotating freely then you spin, uh, switch on the spindle of the lathe and I keep turning it end for end and I'm running it off both ends of the lap periodically so roughly one third off either end of the lap and that way you don't get a bell mouth in the ball. So, I'm uh, just going to have to stick at it unfortunately. I, I wish I'd never seen that adjustable reamer now. <laughs> should throw it away. Okay, so what am I confessing to? Well, yesterday you would have seen me making this liner uh, from a piece of steel tube and uh, everything worked out fine. All the sizes were correct. And I started to lap it, as you could see. And when I got to the point where it was starting to polish up, I had a good look inside. And it turns out that using this stupid adjustable reamer was a big mistake. And the gouge marks that were left behind where I put that reamer in there were uh, not going away and uh, I think I could have lapped it a lot longer and probably I would end up with those gouge marks still there. So I recognized the lost cause and I said you know what chuck that away and make this one. Now this is made from the end of an old four-stroke engine crankshaft like one of those 18 horsepower single cylinder engines and when I cut it up on the bandsaw I could tell that it wasn't steel and from the chips left on the bed of the lathe, I'm pretty sure this is a malleable iron. But it machines beautifully and I had a big enough piece of stock to make another one. And it took me about half the time to make this one as I spent on this one yesterday. So let's call this one a practice and uh, this is the one we're going with. Now I also changed the way I was lapping this. Instead of doing it in the lathe, I just did it on the bench here with my cordless drill and uh, the reason for that is that I don't like getting the lapping compound anywhere near the lathe 
and it was just a bit easier to do it on the bench and if anything locks up you can just let go of the trigger to drill and uh, I'm not going to show a lot of it on camera because I'm pretty sure that the less mature people would look at that and uh, find it rather amusing. Uh, I needn't elaborate why. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, it was just easier doing it on the bench here and just doing it by hand. But uh, suffice to say that I got a pretty good result. And I'm going to try and show you inside the bore there. Uh, I'll see if I can get a torch down there and we'll have a good look at it. All right. I don't know how well it's coming up on the camera but that's almost a mirror finish from where I'm standing so if you look down the bore of this there it is there you can see it <laughs> yeah that's really really pretty so that's malleable iron and I think anyway this laps up better than steel now anybody who's a uh, an expert on this might be able to shed some light on that but I'm really super happy with this one so that's the one we're going with, the old steel one. Well, let's just say that was a practice. And uh, I think this one's gonna do a really good job on the engine. Okay, this is how the assembly works. So the sleeve just fits down into the crankcase like so. And it sort of bottoms out about there. This space here will be where the cooling fins will be shrunk on later on. And then the cylinder head goes on top of that again. Now, I've run out of time in today's episode, but we'll uh, look at this next time. We'll make the cooling fins and the cylinder head. We'll try and get all the holes drilled, get all that part of it bolted together. And then we can move on to doing the piston and the connecting rod. Now, it turns out that I've already made a connecting rod, but this is a mock-up and it's 3D printed. And here is the piston. Again, 3D printed. And I'm going to glue these two halves together and then we'll get this sort of machined or sanded smooth until it fits in the bore of the sleeve. And the reason I did this is I wanted to visualize what it looks like in the bottom of the piston. And I wanted to see how the connecting rod fitted into that part. So at the moment it sort of needs a bit of fettling to get all that to work. But I prefer to do this than to look at the drawings. If I can see a 3D representation or a mock-up it gives me a bit more confidence to go ahead and actually make that part. So uh, perhaps next time we'll have this all fitted and we can see how that works. But for today, I'm going to say cheerio. Uh, thanks for joining me and uh, check out the next episode. And uh, yeah, it's Prezzo signing out. Cheers. Look, it's time we talked. I know, I know, but you've let me down once too often. No, it really is over for us. Look, don't look at me like that. Don't cry. I'm going to see other tools. So should you. Now just leave. Oh, and don't forget to leave your key. <laughs>